remember that. I just remember that I did come down off the stage and the guards actually parted. Um, and I got to go up and hug him and say, you know, I forgive you. I know who you are. I know you know who I am because you've been looking at me all night. Um, and I forgive you. So 1.30 in the morning on August 27th, I'm standing in the D.C. morgue uh, identifying, you know, my son's body. Uh, and they had brought us into the room, wheeled him up to the glass, opened the bag, um, he still had this shock look on his face. They hadn't even closed his, his uh, eyes. The back of his head was gone. Uh, and I can pretty much still see his gray matter in the bag. Incarcerated kids change a lot more than that. So I didn't recognize him at first. Uh, but about halfway through the sermon, I recognized that this was, I was face to face for the first time in three years. Um, with the kid that killed my son. I actually knew the kid that did it. Um, his father and I grew up together. His father was new in life. And so I felt this kind of urging to actually move towards forgiveness, which actually was a lot more freeing probably for me than at the time than it was for him. Um, part of what was keeping me sort of bound up and angry was that I hadn't forgiven. Now, one thing I've learned about forgiveness is that sometimes it has more to do with me than it does with the other person. Now that I'm the one bound up and sort of trapped and caught up in all of that emotion, that when you know I forgive whether you technically, whether you have this idea that you deserve it or not, or whether or not you're actually sorry for what you did or not, I'm not bound up anymore. I just know for me, that it was a lot more painful to carry that stuff around than it was to let it go. And as a result of that forgiveness process, he's a very different man today. I think when we talk about what restorative justice is, which means to me two things. One, it means um, obviously taking responsibility for whatever you caused, you, harm you caused. But it's also, system, it's also systematic in, you know, that there are reasons for why people engage in violence. It isn't just because they're animals. It isn't just because they're, you know, um, they're, they're inherently violent. You know, a lot of times it has to do with poverty and lack of opportunity. And so, um, and how treat people are treated in the justice system also has to do with that. You know, it has to do with that too. So you have to kind of address both things. That's what restorative justice does. It gives the opportunity first for um, the person who was um, on the receiving end of the crime or the family on the receiving end if the, the victim is no longer there. And then the person that, uh, you know, that, that actually engaged in that it gives them a chance to try to repair it. So, like I said, I'm grateful now that he was kept in the juvenile system, that he was seen as a child um, who had, you know, yes, he had committed a crime, but this was this was a 12 year old. This wasn't an adult. So I think you have to look at the you have to look at the system and say, okay, is this is this punishment system working? Is it making people any better? If you're not healing their own trauma that got them to that point in the in the first place, or lack of opportunity, or you know, uh, you know, resource communities, any of the, any of those things, if you're not dealing with that, then all you're going to have is somebody who's coming out probably more hardened, more traumatized, and coming back to a community that they're not prepared for.